I'm honored today to be speaking with two crucial people behind the new documentary, Passion Play, Russell Westbrook. Meg Cirillo, and she's the supervising producer. Eric LeDrew, he's the co-director. And this film follows the NBA star, his life, talking about grief and love and everything in between. So, hey, guys, I really want to start with talking just a little bit about your roles in making this film happen. And, Eric, we'll start with you. Sure, yeah. I, uh, I guess I can kind of take credit for coming up with the concept. Uh, obviously, Russell is, is his own man is, and has lived his story. But, you know, the, the idea kind of came to us like, you know, wh who would you, if, if you had to pick like one athlete to, to, to work on, you know, a documentary for, for your next project, who would it be? And, you know, we were coming off of like a string of projects and, and kind of like what we were looking for was someone with a little bit of controversy to their name, just a little bit, but a lot of talent and charisma. We were looking for someone who just like light up the screen and, and would kind of like really invigorate the project, just like bring a lot of energy to it, basically. And, um, you know, Russell was like at the top of the list. It was a very short list. And, you know, Russell was a number one. A week later, you know, now this is like in a vacuum, by the way, um, you know, no one was proposing anything, you know, with Russell to us. It was just like any athlete, any sport, who would it be? And then like a week later, maybe not even a week, we got you know, uh, sort of an agent, mutual agent came to us and was just like, what do you guys think about Russell Westbrook? And we were like, we got an idea, like we're ready to go. I think in the sports world, I am the bad guy. I am the guy that's easy target because of the way I play the game. And, um, you know, pretty much from the, the get go, it, it did not take long at all. A lot of times on these projects, creative can take a long time to lock into place. And honestly, in this place, I would say the core concept, the title, passion play, the concept of investigating an athlete's overwhelming passion sort of through the prism of, of, a, of a sort of a bunch of different emotions and kind of like what the origin stories were behind each emotion like that came together very quickly like literally within days you know um and from there it was like really a long production obviously following Russell for he's on the thunder when we started got traded to the Rockets got traded again and again we had the pandemic NBA bubble now he's back in LA, you know, it, it, we didn't even know this was a journey home, but like, that's basically what the story is. It's the, sort of the prodigal son coming back home. And um, yeah, basically like, you know, that's, I guess that's my role. <laughs> <laughs> and Meg, what about you? <laughs> well, I'm uh, Eric's uh, creative partner in crime, um, but you know, with everything that went down, like my job was to be the leader of the logistics and make sure from production through post to delivery that we were able to capture all of these things with Russell, um, every trade through through the pandemic and everything else in between. So it was I I didn't realize that you guys had followed him for for so long in filming this documentary. And of course, I've seen a little bit of the film. It's out right now on Showtime. And what I really thought was fun was to see those videos of Russell playing as a kid, as you mentioned, in L.A. with his dad. And there were other crucial people in his life talking over those videos. So what was it like trying to track down all those clips from Russell Westbrook's youth and then also pulling in together all these elements of, of the trades that he went through, you know, now in his professional career? I mean, that's a, I'll take the first one, but Meg really should chime in on the tracking down aspect of it. Like, I'll just say for a long time, um, those, those sections covering Russell's childhood had like black screen and just like childhood video in big letters on it. And we were just like, it's gotta be out there. Like someone was filming it, you know, like we're just hoping and praying and kind of building, building the narrative with the interviews that we constructed and, and just hoping and praying that we were going to find good footage and, and really Meg is the one who spearheaded that effort. So all credit due there. Well, yeah, no, and honestly, and huge shout out to Chris Young, who <laughs> from uh, <laughs> Russell's childhood, who um, basically had been filming all of this stuff all along. And, you know, thankfully we had the support from Russ's family and his team around him that they were all really eager to get this stuff with us and work with us to, to get all of this footage, which I mean, thank goodness they were filming this entire time because it's amazing. Nobody's seen it before. It is, and it's truly incredible. And I think it really also gets the message across of this film. I mean, it's so powerful and it has to be when discussing one of the most passionate players of the game. So what's the creative thinking behind building this project? I know we kind of got into that a little bit, but how much was Russell involved in that? I mean, obviously he, he lived the story. So, uh, you know, it, it, like he, all he has to do is act and be, and like the story is kind of coming to us, you know? Um, but in, in terms of like the literal collaboration, I would say it was a process of, 
of kind of pitching him ideas and seeing how he responded to them and how they resonated with him and then and then getting his feedback basically it was it was a it was a loop a kind of a creative conversation that just like continued over time like he he definitely had his like priorities i mean frankly like he'd be like i don't i don't really care about you know x y or z like you guys are storytellers you think that's important like go for it but i'm telling you this is important and and one you know number one was like he really felt it was important to talk about sort of the genesis of of his public image and like the disparity between his private life and his public life and how that evolved that was the reason for him to do this project was was not just to tell his story but to talk about why why the perception of him is so different from the reality that was number one. And number two, like it was a really big priority for him to give, you know, just to like honor his community in LA. He's like LA, you know, just through and through LA is Russell. Like in, in his mind, like he is LA in a way, you know, there is a critical part of the narrative, um, sort of like a, it's a bit of a fulcrum in his evolution when he becomes more engaged with his community and realizes that he kind of has a lot to prove to the public. Talk about the genesis of his faith. Um, and so we kind of, we built, a you know kind of like a four-part like narrative arc as a part of like the larger like events happening in his life um basically we we deal with the sort of genesis of his family's faith which really comes from his father russell jr or og as i'm honored to call him uh and uh that's kind of the origin of the westbrook family faith if you will and then how that gets kind of activated in russell's childhood when he decided to try out for the freshman team instead of varsity because he was afraid of failure and then the lesson that taught him um, and then kind of how that grew over time. And you'll see it's kind of it's like a thread that kind of like really ties everything together beautifully. And that was a critical you know, priority for Russell as well. So that's what I'd say we come with as kind of like this is the story. We feel like the audience is going to you know, really connect with these things in this way. And then Russell's like, all right, but you got to make sure you hit these things in this way, you know, because that's what's important to me about this. So it was really a meeting of the minds just to tie that all together. Sounds like he was a very proactive voice in making this all happen. And you guys were kind of bouncing ideas back and forth and then also getting great feedback from him and in, in making the project come to fruition. So I want to ask you now, what do you think is the most important takeaway for your audience when watching this documentary? Like, so there's, there's kind of like, I think what, what I hope as the filmmaker, and then I think what what Russell personally wants to communicate. And I think, you know, those priorities we talked about for him, like his importance of his community, the evolution of his faith, and and sort of the, the disparity between his private and public perceptions, like those are, I would say, Russell's like primary takeaways. And then for us, like the point of view we bring as filmmakers, number one, I'd say like point of view is everything from for as at religion of sports, like we're always like, what is the point of view on a project? Literally the first question. But secondly, like kind of our, you know, you can't kind of help but bring your own point of view to it. And I would say what we crafted was was a story about a guy who believes in being true to himself above just about everything else. And, and when he's not true to himself, he can't do the things that he does. He can't be the man that he is to his family. And so this story is a little bit of a struggle, of, especially when as his public sort of perception begins to turn a little negative and, and kind of grow beyond his control, like how that pulls him away from being himself and, and kind of makes him feel like he has things to prove and, and, and the journey, you'll see he goes on quite a journey of sort of self-discovery, I would say. And, and I think my hope in the end is, is both as a takeaway that, that first off, just sheer respect for what Russell has accomplished and appreciation, but also, you know, appreciation of him as a human being. And, um, and then just very simply, like, I hope everyone can, can kind of look at the, can see the importance of, of being true to yourself, no matter what people are saying around you. I, I would say at its core, like to me, that's, that's the like very simple value of Russell's story and put it out in the world. And Meg, do you have anything to add to that? No, I think that's absolutely right. I also believe that, you know, in a way this is is Russell reclaiming his own narrative too. I mean, the media has such a, a deep perception of who Russell is. And I think for us, it was really important to show, you know, the world who Russell is inside, off the court, like who he is with his family and like, being able to show the world that like he's just not this media perception that everybody has. He's a real person and there's no shortage of respect from me after watching your documentary. I think you guys do an excellent job of illustrating that and, and showing so many aspects of his life that were hidden from the public for such a long time. It was great talking with you guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Katie. Yeah, thanks so much. And Passion Play, Russell Westbrook, stream it now on Showtime. I'm Katie Johnston for CBS Local News.